In this video, we will continue our discussion about the phareptosis and chemotherapy resistance. In one of our video about phareptosis, we have discussed how this uh, phareptosis can help in uh, tumor cell death. So, in this case, uh, in this video, we will discuss that uh, even though the tumor cells are resistant towards this uh, chemotherapy, most of the some of the tumor cells or some of the cancers. Uh, are resistance towards chemotherapy such as pancreatic cancers or the other solid tumors cancer then in that case the phareptosis can be used or uh, inhibitor to trigger uh, inhibitor uh, can be used that can uh, trigger this phareptosis so some of those inhibitors uh, are been discussed in this figure and we will uh, cover those inhibitors so before going into this uh, uh, what are the different inhibitors that can trigger phareptosis we, will, uh, we need to understand that they have characterized phareptosis in this figure has uh, been activated by three different ways. Uh, first one is activated by uh, this uh, dysregulations or down regulation of this GPX4. Second one is activated by uh, decrease in the uh, uh, decrease in the amount of this uh, LIP. And third one is activated by uh, decrease in the amount of this uh, ACS L4. So let us start uh, with the first one. That is uh, how what are the inhibitors that can be used to uh, down regulate or dysregulate this GPX4 or this uh, GCH formation. So when it comes to this GPX4, uh, some of the uh, inhibitors are been mentioned here, such as this microRNA 324-3P. Uh, the upregulation of this microRNA will leads to this uh, inhibition of this GPX4. Simultaneously, the downregulation of this AR and KIF 20A will lead to the uh, inhibition of this GPX4. So, any of these inhibitors can be used to inhibit this GPX4. And in order to inhibit this uh, GSH, the GSS biosynthesis can be uh, uh, can be uh, targeted uh, using this uh, inhibitor. That is. Uh, uh, ENT uh, corin uh, uh, diterpenoids and simultaneously the as we have discussed in one of our uh, in, as we have discussed in our previous video that uh, it's the cascade effect of phareptosis that the cystin uh, will uh, high amount of cystin in the uh, tumors micro environment will uh, will lead to the entering of this uh, cystin uh, within the uh, tumor cells and uh, this uh, cysteine will uh, help in the formation of this GPX4. So this cysteines, uh, entering of cysteines within the cells can be inhibited uh, using this uh, inhibitors such as this uh, erastin or uh, sorafin and simultaneously the upregulation of this microRNA 375 or ATF3 will prevent the inhibition of cysteine within the uh, tumor cells and all these uh, uh, inhibitors will help in the decrease uh, help in the inhibition of this GPX4 that plays a role towards uh, that plays a role towards uh, preventing this phareptosis so when the GPX4 is inhibited this phareptosis will occur and the next uh, way by which phareptosis can be uh, inhibited is uh, preventing this uh, lipid iron complex formation and this can be done using this inhibitors such as the DHA or the down regulation of this DMT1 or LCN2 this will cause the uh, this will cause the decrease in the uh, iron formation decrease in the iron formation and uh, decrease in the iron formation thereby decrease in the ROS formations and uh, thus uh, the phareptosis uh, uh, this uh, this uh, what happens in this uh, lipid iron formation is that uh, lipid has been consumed uh, by this iron thereby preventing uh, this thereby uh, preventing this lipid oxide formations outside layer uh, lipid oxide formation uh, formations in the outside layer of the membrane and the lipid oxide formations is important one of the important step for this phareptosis so by uh, uh, preventing uh, this uh, lipid iron uh, formations using this inhibitor such as DHA or DMT1 down regulation or LCN2 down regulation 
uh, will prevent the lipid iron complex formations and the uh, lipid oxidations will happen on the outside membrane and that will leads to the or that will trigger ferroptosis or uh, we can say that cell death the uh, last uh, ways by which this ferroptosis can be triggered is uh, by affecting uh, this uh, uh, pufa2 pufa coa pathways uh, by affecting the enzyme acl s4 and this can be done by down regulating this arf6 or the other way is that is to target this pl2 ploh uh, conversions uh, that is done using the enzyme this lox and por so this lox can be reduced by down regulating this mir522 so by down regulating uh, this uh, inhibitors the pathways to form this ploh can be reduced or this lipid oxide formations can be reduced and thereby uh, not lipid oxide formations reduced uh, however this ploh formation re reduced thereby uh, lipid oxide formations will occur at the outside surface membrane or within the lipid membrane of, uh, of in the lipid membranes and that will lead to the ferroptosis so this is the uh, some of the uh, approaches that can be used to trigger ferroptosis where uh, the cells are resistant towards chemotherapy i hope you got a basic idea about how this ferroptosis uh, can be triggered and what are the some of the, some of the inhibitors that can be used to trigger ferroptosis and if you need to understand more about this the relationship between ferroptosis and chemotherapy resistance in detail you can go through the reference uh, that has been provided in the description so that's all for this video thank you for your time